you can read my title. Uh, just to review what the International Agency for Research on Cancer has already done, uh, this was in 2011. Um, they concluded as a result of a working group evaluation, they meet for eight days and consider all the evidence carefully, carefully assembled, they concluded that in humans there is limited evidence for the carcinogenicity of radiofrequency radiation. And this was because positive associations have been observed between exposure to RFR from wireless phones and with glioma and acoustic neuroma. I'll talk about that in more detail later. And then cancer in experimental animals at that time, again, limited evidence. And their overall evaluation is that radio frequency electromagnetic fields are possibly carcinogenic to humans. That's group 2B. Now their grouping is one, which is a human carcinogen, 2A, probable human carcinogen, 2B, possible, which was this at this time, and 3, at that time, no evidence, or insufficient evidence to conclude. Well now, why do we now believe that RFL causes brain cancer? There are actually three important sets of case control human studies. Studies in which you assemble uh, cases of the disease of interest and compare their exposure to the, uh, the thing of interest with a group of controls who are drawn from the same population of the cases and matched as far as possible with the cases by age and sex. An international study coordinated by IARC found a in twofold increased risk of brain cancer, glioblastoma, after 10 or more years' use. Lennart Hardell in Sweden, uh, he has done several studies and they have shown two to five hold increased risk after prolonged use, especially when exposure became, began early in life. And it's important, these studies in Sweden, because Sweden was one of the first countries to start using uh, mobile phones and cell phones. And then a very important study in France. Uh, and this found a, a five-fold increased risk for five or more years of use. And I'll give you other findings from this study in a moment. Now, this is the... Uh, finding for the interphone study, surprisingly they put it just in the, in, the, in the appendix. But what they did was to look time from uh, start of regular use. You see the numbers of cases, controls, the odds ratio, which is a measure of risk. If you get up to an odds ratio of two, it's a doubling of risk. You see for 10 or more years, a doubling of risk. And the risk, not completely, uh, accurately, but it went up with increasing exposure, which indicates what we call a dose-response relationship. Now, this is one of the, uh, uh, the three studies which have looked at the risk for glioma. Um, one of them was a study in the UK. It was a cohort study, which means you study large numbers of people. This was a study initiated by Valerie Burrell of Oxford, large number of women who were attending the mammography screening program in the UK, and they didn't find an increased risk of glioma after 10 or more years of use. But one of the troubles is, with this sort of study, is that you collect data at the beginning, you cannot uh, verify what's happened subsequently until the time of the end point. Whereas when you do a case control study, you can collect data over years of use up to the time of study. And in the case control study of Hardell, you can see these increases of risk. Um, and the study of, in France, which I already referred to. And this is more details of the study in France. They actually looked at glioma. And particularly important, they characterized the risk of glioma on the safe side of where the phone was used. And you can see the increasing risk with increasing exposure to mobile phones, uh, increased risk, all exposures 
on the same side of the head um, and even an increased risk of meningioma, which is not malignant, but uh, um, which uh, is also a brain tumor. And here we have the studies which have looked at acoustic neuroma. What is acoustic neuroma? Well, the vestibular nerve, which t goes from the ear to the brain, is the, how we hear. And around that, you have uh, cells which are very similar to the cells that we've just heard about, the schwannomas. And these are essentially human schwannomas. So you can see even the cohort study of uh, Benson with Varela Burrell found an increased risk of acoustic neuroma after 10 or more years of use. Also Hardell and also, but a, but a smaller study, much smaller study in Korea didn't find an increased risk. And this is a very interesting study. It was a study uh, that was done in adolescence in a number of uh, country, Nordic countries and it was largely interpreted as negative but in fact what the investigators did is in addition to showing us the data from what they got from questionnaires of the subjects or their parents they were able to collect for a subset of them the records of the phone company, the operator records, so that these are more objective measures of exposure. And here you see with these adolescents, once you get to more than almost three years of, of use, you get a doubling of the risk of brain tumors. And again, uh, you have increasing risk, risk with increasing years since the initial exposure, uh, subscription, in other words, increasing uh, duration of exposure and a significant dose-response relationship. And this is not very long, 2.8 years of use. How many people uh, do we now know have had 5, 10, even more? Uh, what we seem to be seeing here is that the, to me, uh, some of the uh, risks that we see are somewhat different in terms of the type of phone. If you, the blue line is digital um, 2G GSM uh, exposure and you say, see increasing risk with increasing exposure but when you use the 3G you have even greater risk. And yet the uh, risk which is in red, it shows the increase we've just spoken about, but the average radiated power is actually very different. Now, I'm sure somebody can explain this to me, um, but at the moment I don't understand it, but I'll just show you the data. Uh, we know that uh, the cell phone uh, held, held at the side of the head, you get this degree of exposure within the brain. And this is, again, when it's 25 millimeters from the side of the head it goes right into the brain. One of the things that's interested me, because part of my work in the past has been very much related to breast cancer, is that there have been seven unusual clinical case reports um, of brain cancer associated with mobile phone use. We believe this to be real by exposure modeling and also toxicology studies. Uh, marketing has been made for bras that will enable women to keep the cell phones in, in their bras. And you can see this one is just to the outside of the, of the breast. And here it was the first case report in 2009. Nagorni reported invasive multiple primary tumors in a 34-year-old, and these are the tumors, these white areas. Uh, a woman who had kept a cell phone four hours a, a day in her bra for 10 years. And this was confirmed by uh, a study by West et al. Uh, from California, and again, we have, this is 
the tumor, uh, tumors uh, in one of these uh, cases. He reported four cases. Here are a series of two other cases. This is another example. So we have these case reports. The women didn't have genetic risk factors. They had no family history or other risk factors. It was an unusual location for multifocal tumors. It's where the phones were kept. And there was no significant histology away from the areas of cellular phone use. Two of these even had spread to other parts of the body. This is a worrying thing, and it means we have to be cautious about, uh, we have to be careful to warn people they mustn't keep their cell phones close to their body. Uh, the, these are various other reasons for deducing that radio frequency radiation <coughs> causes breast cancer. Now, it's not just brain cancer and vestibular neuroma that has been reported. In Israel, they noted uh, that parotid or salivary gland tumors, here's where these uh, uh, glands are in our, in our face, um, they've tripled in Israel. Um, one in five were under the age of 20. And this is where people hold their cell phones, so they seem to be related to the use of cell phones. And here's the graph which shows the increase of these cancers reported in 2011. So this led the Israeli Dental Association to issue a warning. They pointed out that one in every five rare malignant tumors of the cheek occurs in someone under the age of 20, and they advise use of headsets and speaker phones and limit exposure. As we have been hearing again and again, but I just want to repeat it, we have these major concerns of exposure to children, they're developing brains, we think they may be particularly susceptible, and we warn that even if some ongoing studies, there's a study ongoing now in a number of different countries called Moby Kids, uh, which we believe has been planned possibly too soon, uh, but it, that it may be negative, and we're a little concerned over the exposure information. But we believe in spite of all this, exposure early in life could increase cancer risk, not necessarily in children, but in adults, because we know most human carcinogens prolonged exposure increases risk. If they start exposure early in life, the chances are you'll increase your risk of the associated cancers in adults. Uh, we've heard just, I won't go on uh, on this, we've, we've just heard about this. I just remind you this is extremely important evidence. Now, when we've been talking about this, often you have people who come up and say, but there's no evidence that anything is happening in the population. In fact, that's not so. Phillips and his colleagues have recently published this, that there has been a change in glioma, uh, the most malignant form of brain cancer, uh, from 1995 to 2014, an increase in the cancers in the temporal and frontal lobes of the brain, the areas closest to where cell phones are applied to the head, whereas in other areas of the brain it's been stable. So changes are occurring already. It's a rare tumour. We're talking about four for 100,000. Uh, no, sorry, this is a relative change. That, that, that isn't the incidence rate. But nevertheless, it's still a rare tumour, but we're seeing these increases. And we know that uh, this is also being seen in the United States. This has been reported in two reports, one by a group headed by Gittleman, and more recently by a group from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences confirming the other group. So the incidence of brain cancers is significantly increased in all children, adolescent and young adult ages from birth to 24 years. 
Another country with a reported increase in brain cancers is Brazil. Uh, we've spent quite a bit of time on the uh, on 5G. Um, my colleague from uh, Montreal, who done work together, Paul Haru, a very interesting physicist, who actually I first encountered when we were doing studies of occupational cancer uh, in people in Hydro-Quebec, where he was working, employed there, and uh, uh, Ontario Hydro in Ontario, and electricity to France, we found increased risk of uh, cancers associated with EMF exposure, especially people going in and out high doses of electrical fields, uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, le uh, leukemia. Um, Heru points out that optical fiber, which can be used to deliver the internet of things, is much safer, healthier, and faster. And with optical fiber, everyone could enjoy communication speed ultimately 10,000 times faster than wireless, less vulnerable to hacking and harmless to the health of humans and other species. I happen to live in a part of Canada where uh, Bell Canada, which is one of the major suppliers, telephones and tele television actually, uh, has started providing optical fiber to homes. And uh, so I have a wire coming into my home uh, I don't have, uh, t I'm not dependent on getting internet from uh, cell towers and hopefully we will avoid 5G for that reason. So my overall conclusion as a result of this is that were I ought to reassemble a working group to reevaluate radio frequency radiation, they must conclude it is a human carcinogen IR category one, because we've got the human evidence, we've got the animal evidence, and we know uh, the mechanisms. Radio frequency radiation is now ubiquitous, even if the risk per individual is low. As we've already heard, it can become a major health problem. So the precautionary principle, avoid get exposure as low as possibly achievable. Alara principle we learned to apply for ionizing radiation years ago. Get exposure as low as reasonably achievable. Hold things away. Distance is your friend. Thank you.